Okay, so welcome back. So today this will be the continuation of definitions. And introductory concepts. So last time I defined what was an adiabatic process which basically indicates no heat is added or removed from the system. But we also, and I mentioned other type of processes, but I forgot to write them down. So let me just do that today very quick. The other type of process would be isothermal process. That means constant temperature. Iso Beric process that means constant pressure, and you also could find aso choric process, which means. constant volume. Okay, uh, something that Jan is also widely used in thermodynamics is the term specific. So specific in most instances it means per unit mass. So for example you will have the specific volume, which is defined as lowercase v divided by volume, I use uppercase, divided by mass. That's another thing you will find out that throughout the book, generally they use the lower cases to define the specific value and the upper cases to define a trader quantity. So in this case, volume. Then you will have specific energy in which they will use probably little u or little h. This is internal energy. This will be enthalpy. We'll study that later on. Uh, and this will be either u. So this should be, sorry, capital. Let's do that again. Should be capital U, capital H, and that should be equal to I did a reverse this time, it will be lowercase u, lowercase h. Okay? Then sometimes they will mention the specific work, but that one generally will be lowercase w divided by capital K, uh, uh, capital W over M. But this one is not as common, generally they will write it down under this form. And then the two exceptions of this rule would be the specific gravity, which basically is just defined as SG, is basically the density, and you will be referring, referring it to the density of the water. Okay? And I think, is that all, uh, or is it something else? And I think that's all, okay? All right. Now let us define two more quantities, give the definition of two more quantities. Let's first talk about the temperature.
So if you remember from uh, last uh, video, we say that, are, that the substance is defined by its properties and that temperature, for example, is a property, pressure is a property, the mass is a property. And we have two types of property, intensive and extensive. Okay, so one type of them was that the uh, total amount is the summation of each one of the parts, like the mass, but the other one was like that it doesn't depend on the summation, but it's like a global uh, property, and uh, the temperature is one of them. For, in, for instance, if somebody asks you, ask you, what is the temperature in, in the room, you know the temperature in the room will be the same everywhere, the same thing for the pressure. But if somebody asks you what is the mass of the room, you can add every single item that is contained within the room, and if you add them together, you will have the total mass. Okay? So for the temperature, let's see. If we first start by the metric system, we know that the uh, Celsius system And the Kelvin. So generally this is the one used for metric, but this is the most common. So the Celsius system was based on what? I think most of you know that. Is that zero will be the temperature of the freezing, will be the freezing temperature of pure water, and that 100 will be the boiling temperature of pure water. Okay, and the Kelvin actually will use the zero here as the absolute zero, which will be what? Will be minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. So then the freezing will be 273.15 and the boiling will be 373.15. Okay, and something that is strange, but is the way it is, generally you have a better knowledge of what is the end limits for the uh, metric system than you do for the imperial system, even though you use it every single day. So the origin of the imperial system, we have the Fahrenheit, and we're going to have the Rankine. And you know the Rankine is the official temperature scale for the uh, Imperial. So you are familiar with the 32 will be the freezing temperature of water and that the boiling temperature of the water will be approximately 212. But that's not really the origin for the Fahrenheit scale. The origin of the Fahrenheit scale was that really the zero was defined as the freezing of salt water. And really the 100 wasn't really 100, but was 98.6. So Fahrenheit thought that it was 100, but 98.6 is the body temperature, and his upper limit was the body temperature. Okay? And then the same thing, the Rankin has the setup at the absolute zero, and the absolute zero for the Fahrenheit would be negative 460. So here we have. 491 or 492, we simplify, and then the boiling will be about 672. All right. Okay, uh, what else can I say? Oh, yeah, one more thing. So how do you go from one scale to the other? So if you have the temperature in Kelvin, that one is very easy. You get your temperature in Celsius, and you will add 273.5. If you have your temperature, so if you want your temperature in Rankin, 
you're going to have your temperature in Fahrenheit and you're going to add 459.67 but generally I round off this by 460 personally but then if you want to go let's say from Fahrenheit to uh, Celsius you do 1.8 temperature in Celsius plus 32 so that one is a little bit more complicated okay and finally I'm going to define the pressure so the job definition of the pressure will be pressure equal force over area so the units will be newton meter square which is also a pascal or could be pan force over foot square which sometimes they also call this psi ah, since we are talking about pressure and we just mentioned the specific values let me just give you the the form that you will find more commonly the expression for the ideal gas relation so the general expression for the ideal gas relation so ideal gas if you remember that was developed by Guy Lussac on the 17th century but you know it's equal to PP equal N R T where P is the pressure, B is the volume, N is the number of moles, and that is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass, so mass of the substance divided by the molar mass of the substance. R is the ideal gas constant or the universal, I think it's generally more called universal gas constant and T will be the temperature. Okay, so we just rewrite the above expression PV equals to N over M RT. If we move, it would be sorry, M over N. So we rewrite this as P equal D over M equal R bar over M. So from the previous page, remember specific volume would be what? Volume divided by M. And here this is new, but generally the R bar over M, so the universal gas constant divided by the molar mass, will be the gas constant for the specific gas. Okay? So that relation over here will become what? PV equal RT and you will see throughout the books that Johnny this is the form of the ideal gas relation okay so let's stop over here and on the next video I will start doing the first uh, example Thank you for, uh, for your attention and see you in a little bit.